scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit helped our infirmities. Let me just show you quickly and then we pray. Three ways the Holy Spirit helps men to become mighty and to advance. You call it a run conference. I hope you know what progress is. Please look up. Progress means your next step must always be greater than your first step, your initial one. If your next step is at the same level with the former one, it is not called progress. It is called maintenance. Listen, watch this. If I move this way, there is motion, but this cannot be called progress. For it to be called progress, my next step must be beyond the former one. The next one must be, so if you say I should come, if you say I should run and I do this, am I running? The next step has to be, is that true? That means your least month this year should be January. If any month by any means becomes greater than January in result and impact, you have compromised on the definition of progress for the path of the just is that still in your bible is as a shining light that shined more and more i like the word more and more more and more it says unto the perfect day so let's deal with this in a few minutes that we have is god helping us the help of the spirit the secret behind the sufficiency of ordinary men the principal factor that is responsible for the mysterious rising and the results that ordinary men command as far as the revelation of Jesus is concerned in their world. Now you know by now that when I talk about producing results, it is with respect to the revelation of Jesus and bringing him glory. When we teach from a kingdom perspective, we don't just teach from a standpoint of an ambition and mundane desire to make things happen. Our entire pursuit, the moment we talk about result, it is with respect to the revelation of Jesus. You remove that out of the equation, your pursuit does not have any value. What gives value to prosperity, anointing, ministry, is that in that activity, Jesus is revealed and Jesus is glorified. Is that true? Yes. It's called the reflection principle. In John 17 and verse 1, Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and prayed a prayer and says, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee. So how is the, the father glorified? When he glorifies the son. Are we together? Number one. How does the Holy Spirit help the believer to rise, to excel, to command results in this kingdom? Number one, by revealing the mind or the will of God. The first dimension of the help of the Spirit to the believer is the revelation of the mind or the will of God. This is very, very important. Two scriptures very quickly. Romans chapter 8, please, and verse 27. Romans 8 27 the bible says and he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of god please someone shout it say the will of god 
One more time. Say the will of God. Now, the way God designed the administration of spiritual power, please look up. The administration of spiritual power and even the ministry of the Holy Spirit is that everything revolves around the will of God. Are we together now? The assignment of the power of God is to bring you into the will of God or to keep you in the will of God. Outside of the will of God, the power of God has no assignment. Listen very carefully. One of the ways you attract the power of God is staying in the will of God. If you are out of the will of God and he brings his power called his mercy, the assignment of that dimension of his power is to bring you into the will of God. Is that true? So it's important as a rule of thumb, the entire circumference of the believer's life must revolve around and within the will of God. If and when you are in the will of God, the power of God keeps you and you... you once you are in the will of God, that is where your immunity is established. Once you are in the will of God, that is when your relevance, the moment you are outside of the will of God, you are outside of the region where you make yourself a prey to Satan. Are we together now? Provided the prodigal son was in the house, there was nothing that could happen to him. No lack, no insufficiency. The moment he went out of the house and out of the covering of his father, depletion began until he got to a point where he fed with the swine notice that in his restoration all that he did was to return back home that was it that was all he did to return back home he said i will arise and i will go to my father and i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven i am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your slaves and he got up and did exactly what he said he would do He's returning back to the house. Celebration began immediately. Is someone learning? So when the Holy Spirit helps men, he reveals to us the will of God for our lives part time. Romans chapter 12, please. When you read from verse 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God that ye present or offer your bodies unto God a living sacrifice. He calls it holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable act of worship or service. Verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. Listen carefully now. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. So everything the Holy Ghost does through the word in your mind is to bring you and keep you in the will of God. Are we together? It is the assignment of the Holy Ghost to bring you into the will of God. Jesus himself found where it was written concerning him. Is that in your Bible? Luke chapter 4. He found where it was written concerning him and then he began to quote the scripture or to read it. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. When he was done, he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. He found where it was written concerning him. And the Bible says when the Holy Ghost comes, he will guide you in, in all truth including the will of God. There are many people today, listen carefully please, there are many people today who are farming like Elisha, whereas their destiny is to be prophets over nations. It is the assignment of the Holy Spirit. There is no guessing the will of God. You don't even know it. There is no possibility of knowing it. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of the Father. The Bible said no man knows what is in the heart of a man except the spirit of that man. The moment you begin to pray in the spirit, I wish we had time to deal with this. Among the many things that happen is that you cooperate with the Holy Spirit to begin to search the archives in the mind of the Father. What is in the heart of the Father for you in 2023? It is a risk to start taking steps on assumption. You have to wait until the will comes. The trigger for your action is the knowledge of the will. As a man of God, don't assume that God wants you to expand. Don't assume that God wants you to start doing church. Don't assume that God wants you to organize a healing meeting. No, it is important that you walk your your confidence is knowing that you are in the will of God. In fact, Apostle John was teaching us on prayer and he said, this is the confidence that we have. Is that still in your Bible? That when we ask anything according 
to his will we know that he heareth us so i don't know that i'm hurt just because of the volume of what i'm saying or because of the time expended in prayer as important as that is my confidence is that i am god is so determined to make us walk in his will that he created a system of capturing that will as scripture and still left it still in addition with the holy spirit so that we are entire in his will someone say the will of god say it again there are many of us right now we need to go back and ask god this movement have been moving around the circle today i think i'm a man of god tomorrow maybe a businessman next week i i, I it's like i had zamfara then next week it's like i had potakot you need to take away that those haziness where satan deceives believers is becoming like an angel of light and that whole assignment is to make you sincerely veer out of the will of god satan does not necessarily need to fight you by attacking you if he can take you out of the will of god it was designed to destroy you by default is someone learning it is the assignment of the Holy Ghost you ask your man of God how did he start his prayer platform if you think it's just luck do it that's when you will see the difference between the will of God and the strength of a man when it is the will of God, simple and even foolish things produce results that for your lifetime you cannot explain because the jealousy of God is behind it. God can speak to a man. I remember years ago, this was way before, just, you know, social media was just at its infancy in Africa when God gave me a word. At that point, he told me, he said, do not, he was in the place of prayer. He said, carry your teachings, raw audio, not really very clear, the best of whatever we could do at that time. And he said, all you need to do, this is my instruction, this is what I want. Put it and make it available for people and my angel will take it to the nations of the earth. That foolish instruction. You see, you can copy today and it will not work because it didn't come as a revelation of the will of God. This is the danger of blindly copying things. You can be inspired, but be sure you are in the will of God. Moses said, I'm not going to go and embarrass myself before Pharaoh. One, verify you are the one sending me. Number two, give me a sign. I know who Pharaoh is. When he stood before Pharaoh and said, Thus said the God of the Hebrews, let my people go. You would think Pharaoh say, my God. I'm sorry, who is that God that I offended? He laughed and he said, you must be silly Moses. I think you've forgotten that this is Egypt, the center of wizardry. So this is all you came to do to embarrass yourself here? Janus and Jambers, come and show him that if it is a rod he brought to become a snake, go back and tell your God is not powerful enough. And they turned it effortlessly. You would think because the power of God were there automatically, it should become the rod of, um, of, of Janus and Jambas should not even become a serpent. But it became a serpent right there. To the point that you could not know which one is real or which one is fake. But then God did something powerful. The rod of Moses swallowed the rod of, 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 of Pharaoh and did not increase in size. And he held one and kept it. The God of heaven. Listen to me. Our confidence in doing the things that we do is knowing that we have paid the price with the Spirit to verify and re-verify that we are in the will of God. When you are in the will of God, it does not matter who believes or who does not believe. The most important thing is that the jealousy of the one who sends you is behind and before you. For someone, God can speak to you and say, listen, People in Abia State are waiting. You are the next entrepreneur to rise. And while he's speaking, one of the ways you will know that God is speaking to you is because you cannot do what he's saying by your strength. If God tells you something you have the power to do, most likely he's not the one you heard. He will tell you what only him can do through you. 
if it is God that you hear what you heard should make you afraid it should make you run back to him and say so how do we make this happen how do you look at an ordinary man no one say build an ark that will take all the animals three stories he didn't say are you an architect he didn't say have you tried building a small boat that's God for you God can look at someone you have never stood before any president and he will speak to you and say the 12 presidents I'm sending you to make sure you preach Christ to them and while he's speaking you do not even have a passport God for you he will speak in a way that you must return back to him for the remaining details if it is not God listen one of the ways you know you are in the will of God is you will never hear everything the first time <laughs> there are details he will hide and it is only your hunger that will take you. Hallelujah. The will of God. Let's finish up. Number two. How does the Holy Spirit help the saints to rise and to excel? The ministry of guidance. The Holy Spirit helps men by guiding them number one is the revelation of the will of god number two is to guide you john 16 we read it earlier 12 and 13 13 says that when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth please look up this is powerful i wish i had time to explain this scripture for you that means even when you are standing in the truth you must be guided for it to profit you just because you are in proximity with the truth does not mean you will be blessed by it the truth can kill. Just because it is truth does not mean it will bless automatically. Truth is like a knife. You can hold a knife in a way that it will injure you. A knife that is supposed to cut the vegetable to make the food that we eat. Because you did not hold it well, it can still injure you. Women will tell you there are times that they did not hold the knife well. And they ended up injuring themselves. The, a beautiful tool that was supposed to help enhance your efficiency. When Satan tries to use a lie and it does not work, he will use the truth to kill you. Ask Jesus. When he came to Jesus, he said, turn this stone to bread. Jesus said, it is written. The next time Satan spoke, he said, it is written too. Since it is truth, let's use truth now. It is written. Sanctify them by your truth, he says. Thy word is truth. So it is not every time he will come looking like a wizard. There are times he will speak like a preacher and mislead you with relevant scriptures into derision. Just because it is truth does not mean it will bless you. The Holy Ghost. This is where many people who just embrace scripture and ignore the Holy Spirit. This is a piece of literature. This is a piece of archaeology. This is a piece of history. When you open it, it is a book. When the scrolls are unlocked, it becomes the word. This book you see must be both opened and unlocked. There are seals that close it. It is opened to the optical eyes, but not yet opened in the spirit. And it is dangerous to read the book when it is just open and not unlocked. Because you will find many coincidences. At the end of it, you will end up hating the Bible. Because it will look like a mix of nonsense. Written by people, arguments here and there. A lying spirit came from the Lord. What does that mean? Do not be over-righteous. What does that mean? Because all those things are unfruitful to the mind. If the only thing you do is to open the book. Only the spirit sustains the, the capacity. And you will see a scripture you've been reading forever. And you will stand in tears. There are times that you can carry one verse for days and you are sitting there and it's as if you found a gold mine and you are rejoicing over a scripture, you quote it and someone says, that's nice, you are learning scripture, but something in the name of Jesus, the miracle of open eyes, guided by the spirit, in the name of Jesus, may that begin to work in your life from tonight. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit guides men. There are various ways he guides. There is a difference between leading and guiding. Or there is a difference between direction and guidance. Let me tell you how to direct. Please look up. If I'm to direct you out of this auditorium, here's what I'm going to say. Move straight, turn right, and be on your way. That's direction. Guidance will say, 
follow this way there is a step be careful that step can hurt you so just because you know the road you do not know the contours the very things the bible says the holy spirit guides he does not just lead he leads but he guides many of you have been led you need guidance you are in the place of the will of god but how to navigate the steps now you do not know he told you this man is the one who god will use to lift you now you are with him but what do you do do you walk up to him and say you have been wasting my time god said you are the one who will lift you see now direction is correct but you need guidance is the holy spirit who will guide you and say you know what um take a meal and just go and give him and bless him and don't say anything that's guidance you now go there and say oh who is this what do you do i am so so and so thank you you are the kind of person we're looking for see me tomorrow two of you can be led but only one was guided most people have not opened up themselves to be guided by the spirit you can be in the right environment and still weary yourself you need to pray guide me guide me guide me spirit of the living god guide me guide me for when he guides you in addition to his leadership there is no darkness for you eventually it may not make sense while he's guiding you ladies and gentlemen please hear me it is like driving again when you plot the map on your phone of a location it tells you okay you'll get there in one hour you see but it doesn't just tell you the location it keeps zooming and you, you keep finding out that it is helping you is that true and there are times you go to a road and it is closed it will reroute it again and show you how to still get there direction is not the problem it was not your fault someone decided to put a barricade on what would have been the road it takes guidance it now reroutes and recalculates the time guidance let's finish up the last way the holy spirit helps the believer to rise to excel to make impact and advancement for the kingdom is through the ministry of empowerment the third dimension of his help is through empowerment hmm. this is powerful he empowers us it is true and there are two dimensions to this empowerment there is the empowerment within and there is the empowerment upon this is where we we'll pray the empowerment within has the assignment to produce christ likeness to produce growth and maturity every time you see spiritual immaturity there is no stature and character in the believer he has ignored the ministry of empowerment within he said my little children of whom i travel until christ be formed in you when the holy spirit empowers you regardless where you came from regardless the natural traits and limitations that came with where you came from he will grant you grace there are times that you who should be angry and speak to anybody and say when i'm angry even god gives way you see all those kinds of stains they they fade away because there is an empowerment within most of us do not have that strength in the inner man the bible says in ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 i like amplified it says finally be strong in the lord amplified says draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him there is an implication if christ dwells in you in truth there must be an effulgence of the character of the kingdom is that true I should know that Christ is at work in you because it should be difficult to find out whether you are an Igbo man or Yoruba or Hausa. I should even be at a loss trying to trace you to an earthly place because you have been so transformed. You almost do not carry any negative traits that is associated with your territory. I should be surprised when you tell me, can anything good come out of Nazareth? But he's walked upon me listen to me it is not enough to just embrace the engracing the anointing the empowerment of the spirit starts from within so you find out that he empowers you to kill some things they just die like that anger bitterness 
all of these things your life changes people who look at you and say i used to know this person but you are changed not by your ability but by the ability of the spirit the empowerment within produces christ likeness produces growth and maturity stamina within then the empowerment upon in fact let's look at ezekiel 36 27 let me just give that one scripture my apologies for stretching the time it says and i will put my spirit within you say within you someone say within you and cause you to walk in my status he says and you shall keep my judgments and do them why because there is an empowerment within within how do you love in such a wicked world how do you show kindness in such a wicked world you have to be empowered your feelings will betray you a thousand times you will need an empowerment from within most people what you call the fruit of the spirit you see listen you can impart a gift to a handkerchief but you can impart the fruit of the spirit to a handkerchief a gift can come on anything animate or inanimate but a fruit is proof of maturity there is no tree that has a fruit at infancy for every single gift he matched it with a corresponding fruit by the time the workings of the spirit is within you let me tell you sincerely you will truly become another man that when people look at you the only example they can tell is jesus christ and it does not matter the background it's a progressive work of the spirit but that it is sponsored by the empowerment of the spirit and so you can love even when it is it does not seem possible to love you can give you can be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity. Are we together? You who would not even help children before. Now something has happened to you, you are changed. Let me tell you the truth. I submit to you that if you have walked with the Holy Spirit and it does not translate to potent conversion from within, either your experience is a lie or you have not maximized that ministry of empowerment within hallelujah because it does not seem marketable to embrace the power within nobody will most likely sow a seed for you for being very nice if you if you raise somebody from a wheelchair quickly you can say come and take this estate and go but for being a person of solid character the results usually take a long time before you see the benefits so most people will not want to pursue that it is easy to pursue the one that brings has a lot of charismatism around it but you see in the realm of the spirit let me tell you the things that may not seem to matter in this realm that is what measures stature in the spirit are we together it says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 there was a mindset there was an understanding the workings of the spirit hanging on the cross and yet looking at john and looking at all these people same thing happened to the Matthias philip uh, uh, when when philip was uh, stephen was about to be matthias hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you